Thanks. This is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love, and we're sitting around the table. You can show everyone. We're sitting around the table, getting ready to have our church service. Now that we have our bellies full, yum. So, we ask you, Lord, to bless this message. Everybody, we're going to turn. <laughs> show yourself, too. Everybody, we're going to turn to Acts chapter 11. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go on my phone with that. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to Acts chapter 11. And we are going to read. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. Okay, there you go. Okay. And the apostle and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up in, uh, to Jerusalem, that were of the circumcision contended with him, saying, Thou wentest into the men uncircumcised, and didst eat with them. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning, and expounded it by order unto them. Now, before I go any further, what I want to say is, I believe what God is showing me with this scripture he sent me to, that in this last days, we are going to start experiencing a lot of what happened in the book of Acts. And we have to open our ears and our, our spiritual hearts to hear when God is leading us. Because he wants us to serve. He wants us to minister to people. He wants us to be instant in season and out of season. So we have to always be ready and never, you know, never hold back. When God wants us to minister, because what he did, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this short. What Peter started rehearsing to them was the fact that God had given him a vision. And in this vision, he saw these, these sheets coming down and it had food in it, all kind of animals and all that. And God said, slay and eat. And he said, oh no, I won't eat. That's, I don't need anything unclean. And he did it three times. And then the sheep went up. And God said, never call what I have blessed unclean. Don't call it common. If I say it's blessed, it's blessed. That's an everyday language, just to keep the message short so it's not dragged out with a lot of excessive reading right now. But what I wanna share with you is there's gonna come a time when God's gonna have some of us minister to people we may not be used to ministering to. So you have to be on the ready. You have to be available. It's not in your skill. It's not in your talent. It's not in your personality. It's in your availability, not your ability. Your availability. When you avail yourself to God, he can use you in ways you never thought of. And you have to open your mind up. Because one thing, the, the other scripture the Lord led me to, and I'm just going to say it, I'm just going to uh, give a loose paraphrase. I set the land in front of you. As far as your eye can see, that have I given you. Now my question to you is, how far can your eye see? How far can you envision what you're able to do? How far can you picture yourself doing exploits for God? How big of a, of a thing can you do? There's nothing impossible for God. So who knows? God may use you to be an advisor to the President of the United States. God may use you to talk to one of the royalties in so many other countries. You never know what God will do, and you can't put God in a box. You have to be willing to do whatever he says. Don't look at yourself. Don't do that. Because when you look at yourself, you limit God. You will. Your little insecurities, your little self-esteem, all of that will limit what God can do. Because God can only work through faith. So your faith has to be in God, not blocked by your limitations, your fallacies, your weaknesses. No. You have to focus on God. If Peter had not focused on God, he would not have been able to walk on water. Now, we know we can't walk on water, right? Right. Right. But when we are saying, Lord, do with me what you want. Do with me what you will. 
I'm not looking at my ability. I'm availing myself to serve you. And we know that you can do all things. And I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So my weight, my age, my gray hair, my missing teeth, my crazy personality that can drive some people up the wall will not limit what God does unless I focus on my problems, unless I focus on my insecurities, unless I focus on what I don't know, what I can't do. No, it's not about me. It's what he can do. And through Christ, you can do anything God tells you to do. Now, my question is, what is God telling you to do? What is God telling you to do? Some of us, like Lynn and I right now, she and I are both working on our books. And they're going to be published soon. Who knew we were going to write a book last year? Neither one of us did. So there are times when your mind has to open. You have to say, Lord, remove the limits. Remove the ceiling. Remove the walls. I want to go as far as you want me to go. Has God told you to start a theme park? that will teach the Bible? Has God told you to run in, in politics so that you can uh, rearrange the government to line up more with God's ways? What is God telling you to do? Has he told you to buy a giant piece of property and house a bunch of orphan kids? Has he told you to take care of the abused women that have nowhere to go? Prostitutes that want to come out of that lifestyle and they really want to change, but they have no environment where they can. Did God tell you to, to build an environment for them? Did God tell you to start inner healing? Did God tell you to preach to the seniors, to help the, the, the homeless? What did God tell you to do? Did God tell you to run a big corporation that you've never done before? Guess what? Whatever, listen, if God tells you to do something, whatever it is, you already have the ability to do it. Why? Because he put it there with his word. When he told you to do it, the ability was there. When he told Moses to talk to Pharaoh, Moses said, I stutter. I have a speech impediment. I, you know, what am I? And God said, who made your mouth? So my question to you is, what is in your hand? That's what God asked Moses. Did God not make your mouth? Did God not make your brain? He can give you ideas that never would occur to you in the natural. But you have to be available. The Bible says be instant, in season and out of season. And you have to, that means always be on the ready to be used by God. And don't put yourself in the way of what he wants to do through you or else you will never walk on water when peter focused on jesus he walked on water did he not all right when he took his eyes off of jesus and focused on the waves the challenges the storm and he was filled with fear what did he do what did he do he sunk exactly he fell right there in the water but when Jesus said, where is your faith, Peter? And he looked back at him, he was back on top of the water. See, we may not do a perfect job, but just keep your eyes on him. When he calls you to do anything, thank you, Lord. Isaiah, go with me to Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah 6, I already have it marked because that was one of the ones I was supposed to read from. Thank you, Lord. Good reminder. <laughs> All right, listen to this. Sometimes, Isaiah 6, sometimes things in your life have to die. People in your life have to die. Sometimes jobs have to disappear. Finances have to go. You have to go through hell to get to the destiny. But that's why Psalms 23 says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. As long as God's with you, baby, you can go through fire and not get burned. Go through the flood and not drown. All right, Isaiah 6. In the year that Uzziah died, King Uzziah died, 
I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings with twain. He covered his face with twain, that means two. He covered his feet, and with the other twain he did fly. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of the glory. All right, now. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, woe is me. This is Isaiah now. Isaiah is out there in sin like the rest, like the rest of us were before God called us out. He said, woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. When you see God, when you encounter God, you become very much aware of your impurities. You hear me? All right, now, I'm almost done. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand. He had a live coal, and he's taken it with the tongs from off the altar, and he laid it on my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go. And I'm stopping right there. Because the point is, are you willing to go where he wants you to go? Are you willing to do what he wants you to do? You may lay hands on somebody when you don't feel like being bothered with a phone call. When you don't want to put on clothes and leave your house. And somebody might say, can you come over and pray for me? And you might say, oh Lord, help me. I don't feel like being bothered. I was going, this, this is my day. But you go. Even though you may not feel like it. You may not feel like you're full of the spirit. You may not feel like you're spiritually minded. But you go. You avail yourself to God. And what does God do? A lot of times he works the biggest miracles when you don't feel like it. When you feel like it the least. Here's a quick example. Now this is not working a miracle, but it was a miracle to me. I had painted a picture of the chancellor of our school and nothing in me wanted to paint a picture. Nothing in me wanted to draw. Nothing in me wanted to do anything but rest from working on that CEO. Right before graduation, for the first time in my life, after asking God to give me the ability, not only the ability, the will and the determination to start and finish, God enabled me to paint a whole oil painting portrait within three days. By the fourth day, I put the finishing touches on it, let it sit the fifth day, and brought it to the school the sixth day. Brought it to the graduation. <clears throat> when God when God is in something, he will help you do what you not only can't do, what you don't want to do. Here's another one. When I was taking care of my father, before I got saved, I, the thought of taking care of my father was, Ew. you know how the teenagers say, Ew. <laughs> well, that's the way I felt. Oh. But when I got saved, I was begging God to let me take care of him and show him the love that God gave to me to share with him. I wanted him to know how much I appreciated him. Now, that's a change of heart. I didn't do it. I asked God, and what ended up happening, I was able to take care of my father till the day he died. Now, that was a miracle. And you know what? My father, who was almost 82, gave his heart to the Lord because he saw the change in his little selfish brat. He knew there was a God. So no matter what, no matter what goes against your grain, no matter if it's something you think you hate or something that you don't think you ever want to do, if God tells you to do it, his word is alive. His will is fire. He will light you up inside and you can't rest until it's done. When you're sold out to him. So be sold out to God. Give your life to him. Let him know 
that you are his mind, body, and soul to do with whatever he pleases. And you may not like it, you may not feel like it, but obedience, according to the word, is better than sacrifice. Amen? All right. So I'm going to leave you with that. Start asking God what he wants from you. Start asking God how to prepare for that time when he does want to use you. And ask God to give you all the wherewithal, internally and externally, to do what he wants and carry out his will. God bless you. We're done.